Welcome back to Echo Ridge. Today, we're going to find out if we're going to hit Carnivore or if we're going to barely miss it. We're also going to be playing around with this tank and starting to grab all of this salt water here. I've got a nice little design that I want to try out, and so we're going to be playing a little bit with it. We're also going to keep up on our hatchling eggs by continuously expanding our incubators and the amount of stables. At a minimum, we need to add one more. Right now, we have four, and in a normal playthrough, each stable would be enough to feed five duplicates on barbecue. Well, in max difficulty, we can only count about two and a half duplicates per stable. So technically, four stables would be enough to feed 10 duplicates, and we do that for 20 cycles, and we hit carnivore. But I'd rather play it safe and go with five stables. The question is, where are we gonna put it? And we're also starting this episode off with a little sad potatoes, because we're rejecting the barbecue. I know, we're rebels. Except we have a cause. Now we have a wonderful sage hatchling that was just born here, except we don't have a fresh stable for them. And I don't think we should give it its own stable. So we're actually going to mix our regular hatches and our sage hatchlings. There's a little bit of dirt in here, so that sage hatchling will have plenty to eat. We have the sedimentary rock in here for our standard hatches. And by the time this little guy is an adult and starts laying eggs of their own, we may be into the process of slaughtering all the new hatchlings so we can gather the meat to cook it into barbecue to start on our way to carnivore. And this is what I meant at the beginning of the episode. We're going to see sometime today if we're able to start carnivore in time. My goal is to start eating the barbecue by cycle 75. We're also starting to run into some minor power issues here. And the reason is pretty simple. We now have enough incubators where... There are times where two incubators are both requiring power. We're also starting to draw a little bit too much on that line as well. We do have a little bit of saved up cobalt, but not enough yet to be able to turn all of this into conductive wire. So let's go ahead and queue up another, say, 25, and then start on this process. Oh, it's so expensive. In other good news, Sulphur has received their fifth skill point, which means we have access to a mechatronics engineer. Unfortunately, the only research we've unlocked in the shipping category is the auto sweeper. This is still a good start, but to really capitalize on this, we're gonna need solid transport. Unfortunately, with the power system upgrade that we're having to go through, we're gonna have to put that on the back burner. Since we're talking about power, I figured we'd come look at super sustainable. We've only generated 31,000 kilojoules, which means we're still about 210,000 away. So we're stuck on hydrogen generators, solar power, and wheels for the significant future. But the problem is, the longer we keep having these brownouts, the longer our eggs are going without being incubated. This is a real problem. We're just not generating enough hydrogen to keep this hydrogen generator charging this jumbo battery. Maybe it's time to flip this into a smart battery, as a matter of fact. We would then have to add some extra storage for this hydrogen. Let me see what I come up with. And being that we have these important projects going on, I think we're gonna rely on this polluted water for a little bit longer. With the desalinator running and the rock crusher running, it keeps two duplicates on these manual generators a little bit too often. So we're just going to stop the desalinator from running for a little while. Another issue I have found is these two hydrogen generators aren't actually running at the 1200 watts they should be if they were getting Engie's tune-up. We just have so much going on that sulfur hasn't been able to get around to it. So we've upped the priority on the power control station to a 6. But I'm not sure if that's actually going to do what we want it to, because as you can see, there's two microchips ready and able to go here. So we're also going to up the priority on our hydrogen generators. There we go. That'll help out a lot, because when this hydrogen generator is pumping at 1200 watts, it takes less hydrogen to run the entire SPOM, which means more hydrogen will be given to the hydrogen generator running the power for the rest of the colony. Additionally, we've added another hydrogen generator. Because we added a smart battery to control this hydrogen generator, which allows automation to dictate when it's running and when it's not, we still need to make sure that hydrogen doesn't get backed up. Because then the hydrogen would end up lowering in level and eventually the gas pumps would start sending hydrogen all over the base. So now we have another overflow system. The hydrogen prioritizes the spawn. Once there's enough hydrogen backed up in that line, it takes this bridge here and goes all the way up and around and heads towards the hydrogen generator that runs the rest of the colony. We added a little bit of storage in here. If we ever get to that point, we'll be able to save up a little bit of hydrogen. But if it ever backs up too far in this line, 
That is when this hydrogen generator will then burn the excess off. And so far the system's working well, with us even now having enough power to where we are starting to see hydrogen back up in this line. Which is a great sign, because all of this is just more potential power. Look at this magical sight. We're actually starting to burn off all of that extra hydrogen, which is going to go a long way from keeping the dupes off the manual generators. What I'd like to do is take this overflow hydrogen generator and put it up here. So as you know, I've been checking our stables pretty often. And unfortunately, the hatches in the third stable are cramped. But I don't see an egg. It's like a case of Where's Waldo? Oh, there it is. It's a stone hatchling egg. We'll change the sage hatchling incubator back over to stone hatchling, and that should be that. Another problem we're running into, even though we're not even done with our conductive wire upgrade, we're down to two and a half tons of cobalt ore. We have about a four and a half tons of aluminum ore, but other than that, pickings are starting to get slim. And remember, we're still going to need a lot more incubators, because once we do have five stables worth of hatches, they're going to be laying eggs a lot, and we need an incubator for every single one of them. The biggest stockpile I have found is right around here, so we're eventually going to have to get in there and start stealing some of this as well. Alright, what happened to the toilets? Output pipe full, which means the water sieve is not running for some reason. Are we out of sand? No, we have 52 tons. Our duplicates are just too busy. Let's put this on a 6, and then start to consider adding yet another dupe. There we go, that is much better. Eilert is very relieved. Now like I said, we're going to be looking for another dupe. And needless to say, this pod could have been better. But I wanted to point something out about how much synergy there is when the printing pod presents more dupes. I say this because all three of these dupes have gastrophobia. Additionally, all three of these dupes have skilled aesthetic design. And two of the dupes have iron gut. I'm not sure why it does that, but we see this in pods a lot. Unfortunately though, for this pod, without being able to do cooking errands, like using the microbe musher, these three put us in a real rock and a hard place. I think Lindsay might be it, because it will give us a Dr. Decorator. And we know in the future of the colony, we're going to want a Dr. Decorator. Yeah, they can't help out with the ranching and they can't do any cooking, but, but that doesn't mean they can't do any building or tidying or supplying in the meantime. Welcome to the colony, Mage and Lord. Now, because we don't need them to do any of their art or doctoring right now, I think their first skill point is actually going to go into improved carry. But for their priorities, we're going to leave them completely flat. And we're actually out of incubators. This is a big deal because we still have an egg sitting inside this stable. All those power upgrades really put us behind when it comes to keeping ahead of the curve on our incubators. All right, we're back to normal now. The egg was dropped off and we're already going to start with another incubator. Because as soon as the next egg is born, we're going to be in the same pickle. And we still haven't fully upgraded the power network. And there we are again. Once again cramped. This time though, we just had a hatch pop out so we can change this one from a stone hatchling incubator to a regular hatchling incubator. And another egg is down, but luckily this is in our stone hatching stable and they still only have six critters. So their reproduction is fine. To kind of recap where we are right now, we have eight hatchlings in stable number one, all adults. We have six in our second stable with a few babies. We have eight in stable number three, all adults. And then we have six in stable number four with a couple of babies there. The reason why I'm mentioning whether they're adults or babies is because they don't start laying eggs until they're adults. So we need to wait for all five stables to have nothing but adults. We're almost at cycle 60, so I really need to start getting working on that fifth stable. All right, for the first time in a minute, we are ahead of the power curve. We have two empty incubators. Uh, disregard. We have one empty incubator, and I found the location for stable number five. It's going to be a little wonky, just like this one, but it requires the least amount of work to put down all these tiles. And why are we building this stuff out of obsidian? What's wrong with you? For this fifth stable, we had to make a decision on whether or not it was going to be standard hatches or stone hatches. Our stone hatch stable already has seven critters, which means we only have room for one more. And after that, if we don't add another stone hatching stable, we'll have to turn every other stone hatching egg after that into barbecue. Ultimately, I went with a standard hatch because all eight of those critters are already in incubators. It is cycle 61. And once all of these eggs here are born and then turn into adults, we will be ready to start carnivore.
My goodness, look at this, Quinn. Plus 11 to husbandry, plus animal lover. That means they start with a 14 husbandry. This is a no-brainer. We have to take Quinn, even though the calorie situation is starting to look a little dire. Welcome to what I'm hoping is the last dupe we take for a little while, Miss Pandamanda. Miss Pandamanda is going to go directly into farming, and hopefully they'll be able to level up as quickly as possible so we can get them into critter ranching. But there it is. Husbandry of 14 from the rip. And the situation I was talking about earlier has now arrived. We are actually full on stone hatchlings. So this little guy is going to be our first barbecue of carnivore. Well, not really. Between pips and hatches naturally dying, we've eaten 33,000 calories. This is just the first overflow hatch that we're going to be turning into barbecue. And we actually have four empty incubators right now. So I'm feeling okay. I know we have one egg in the stables to deliver, and we have four babies sitting in stable number five. We've also 100% completed our power line upgrade, which is a big help, especially with this amount of incubators, because we're about to get to the point where three incubators are going to be running at once. So now what I'm doing this episode is going from stable to stable, making sure all the hatches are not cramped, because if they're cramped, it means that there is an egg somewhere in their stable. Something else I have to keep aware of is our carbon dioxide level is starting to rise to dangerous levels. Almost half of this level is now nothing but carbon dioxide, which could pose some problems with dupes dropping off eggs or hugging them, things that we don't want to play around with. And right now, I think the easiest solution is just to freeze it. Carbon dioxide turns into a liquid at minus 48. But then it turns into a solid at minus 56. Well, it just so happens if we dig far enough down, it's cold enough to freeze the carbon dioxide. Now, the dupes aren't going to love it, but desperate times, desperate measures, those sort of things. Here's another game of Where's Waldo. I couldn't figure out why they were cramped. I was staring at this stable and couldn't find it. Do you see it? That's right. We have our first smooth hatching egg. A part of me actually wants to let this guy grow and refine some of our metals for us. Because yeah, the smooth hatchlings only refine at a 75% efficiency. It's still a lot better than the rock crusher. We've literally wasted half of our aluminum ore and our cobalt ore because we've been on the rock crusher for so long. It doesn't help either that this asteroid has next to nothing in terms of metal. I really do love this sequential method of timer sensors here. Whenever I have a new timer sensor that needs to be reset, I just find out where the green one is. So for instance, it's here and here. So I know the next one over is the correct timer sensor. Now, in all of our competing priorities, our water tank level has gotten a smidge low. The polluted water tank is pretty much drained. We have this little bit here. So we have connected the desalinator back up, but it is definitely a beast. It has to be emptied all the time. The duplicates have to run on the manual generators to keep it going, and I think that's the reason why our calories are starting to suffer. Either way, we went ahead and activated pickled meal. That way, in the contingency that we just don't have any water, other than what we're saving for our oxygen, we can still turn the meal lice into something edible. At least until the point where we have a good amount of water again. Our last stable has eight critters in it. Now granted, they're all babies, but that means in five cycles, they'll all be adults, which will put us at cycle 70, which means we'll have 30 cycles in order to eat about 350,000 calories. So I think we're actually going to make it, as long as the dupes will occasionally pick up the meat and throw it in the electric grill. But you know, beggars can't be choosy. I didn't know the Quins were yodelers. Miss Pandamanda's having a great time. And just when we thought we had enough incubators too, a stone hatchling decided they were going to lay an egg. Now, I'm sure there's some sexy math out there that would let me know how many incubators I need, but for now, I'm just going to keep going with the one more incubators is how many I need. So we now have four critters waiting to be killed, and yet the dupes think they're too busy to do it. And this is a problem with priorities. Most of them have another task they'd rather be doing. Typically, attacking is number one. So just to make sure we're going to put everybody in the colony on high attacking, because yes, this gives us barbecue, but it also frees up incubators. And quite frankly, we're running out of room and metal. We're also no longer going to use this one for pips. Since we have enough hatches, this incubator would be better served. Look at this. All three ranchers all hugging eggs. 
We've got a sort of assembly line going here. And another one bite the dust. It's like a two for one bonus. We get an empty incubator and some barbecue. As we were saying before, we have three incubators now being powered at one time. And right now, overall, we have 19 incubators. And so far, that's been enough. But some of the hatches inside a stable five are starting to hit adulthood. So we are going to need to add a couple more. I'm hoping 21 is going to be enough because we're just we're running out of all the things. And here come incubators 20 and 21. And unfortunately, we are full. The good news is barbecue is starting to appear on the menu a little bit more often. We're up to 8,000 calories, which is enough for four duplicates this cycle. But the key is we need to eat at least 20,000 calories worth every cycle by cycle 80 at the minimum. With the barbecue coming in slowly but steadily, we've actually turned off the micro mushers. I'm going to keep a really close eye on the calories. Right now, we have about five duplicates worth coming in in the form of pickled meal and the rest being supplied by barbecue, as long as we can keep it up. As a matter of fact, this sage hatch was the last baby we were waiting to grow up. We officially have five stables with eight adult hatches each. That should be enough to feed 12 and a half duplicates on barbecue and get us all the way to carnivore. As long as I can keep all these hatches happy and reproducing, we should be good. Miss Panda Manda is finally leveled up again, so we're now going to have four ranchers capable of doing lullabies and ranching errands. This should help keep the barbecue machine flowing. With the barbecue buffet fully underway, it's time to slowly start turning our sights to other projects. First is long-term water. As we mentioned before, I'm going around and grabbing all this standing salt water. And we're dumping it into this tank. And you'll notice I put a divider in the tanks, and there's a good reason for this. We want that salt water to share its thermals with the brine. But it would be helpful if we could keep the liquids in here separate. Now, there's still some salt water and stuff in here because we haven't started pumping through here yet. But everything being dropped into this tank is warmer salt water. The reason why this is important when we're not running out of power is if you switch between salt water and brine consistently with your desalinator, your desalinator will sort of interrupt itself to change its filter over, which causes an interruption in the water flow. So by pumping them one at a time, salt water for a little while, then brine for a little while, we'll have a much higher overall water output. Eventually, what we'll be doing is deciding what to pump based on temperatures. If the overall temperature in these two tanks is too low, we'll leave more of the warm salt water in there until it can heat up the brine side. Whereas if the temperature in here is too high, we'll leave the brine in the tank and allow it to continue to cool the warmer salt water. But those are long-term plans. And as you can tell, labor is still at a premium. I also wanted to give you an update on the carbon dioxide. As you can see, it's actually dropped. And the reason why is because we finished the ladder rung all the way down here. So as the carbon dioxide gets lower and lower, being the temperatures here what they are, it freezes. It's a slow process, but we do have some here. Now eventually all that carbon dioxide will heat this place up, but my guess is it's going to be a couple hundred cycles. And by then, hopefully, our colony will be doing a little bit better. And once again, we are maxed out on incubators. I need to figure out how many incubators we really need. Let me try the math out like this. We have five stables with eight hatches each, or a total of 40 hatches. And each one of those hatches is going to lay an egg every 5.88 cycles. So if we take the 40 and we divide it by 5.88, we get a number of 6.8. Well, we know each one of those incubated hatch eggs that's properly lullabied will take four cycles to hatch. So we multiply that number times four, and we get a total of 27.2. So my theory, if my math isn't wonky, is we need 27.2 incubators to keep up with the demand of the eggs. And while I'm trying to expand our incubators to that count, I think we're going to do a quick stopgap measure. I'm going to put an automatic dispenser in here and set it to sweep only and critter eggs. That way, when I see little eggs like this that we don't have an incubator for yet, I can sweep it to get it out of this stable so they can go back to the business of making eggs. We'll eventually get up to that 27 number. But until then, we got to make sure those hatches keep laying eggs. The last project of the episode has once again to do with power. We're going to extend this overflow hydrogen line all the way up here. With the idea is if we can get this extra hydrogen generator up here, we'll be able to save a little bit on the duplicates having to run on the wheel. 
You know what? I should probably move this over just a smidge. That way I can also put it inside of its own power station. Not that we have any refined metal for this, but, you know, we'll take one problem at a time. We're also going to back off a little bit from the pickled meal. We already have 50,000 calories. And at this point, every single duplicate should be eating nothing but barbecue. It doesn't quite work out that smoothly, because for the time being, we're going through a bunch of ebb and flows of when those hatches are being born. Eventually it'll all stabilize, but for right now, it's still hit and miss. You know what, if I'm going to store eggs, I might as well start storing them into an evolution chamber. Right now, we're two eggs behind. Not too, too bad, especially considering we started eating barbecue before our drop dead time and the fact that we are at 23 incubators. But these hatches are starting to reproduce like rabbits. I can barely turn around before there's another one that's laid an egg. This is hilarious. It's like the game knows you're going for carnivore, except this time, I don't think we'll need them. This is my life now. I watch incubators for a living. I wait for a hatch, we turn it into barbecue, and then I go around looking for more eggs. Once I'm sure there's no more eggs inside these stables, I go back and I look for more hatches. And yeah, every once in a while, I build another incubator too. Some people are mathematicians, some people are plumbers, others are electricians. I am a professional hatch rancher. Hey Sulfur, can I get next on the massage table please? Appreciate it. And it's sort of paying off. We have 20,000 calories worth of barbecue. Make that 24,000 calories worth of barbecue. That's enough to feed every duplicate for two cycles. And more just keeps coming. But we're going to have to wait till the next episode to see the exciting conclusion of the barbecue buffet. And dare I say, I'm 100% sure we're going to get carnivore next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. Until next time, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.